Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to be discussing Quant Connect. Quant Connect is an algorithmic trading platform that was founded by Jared Broad in 2011. Uh, since then, it's had over 200,000 users and tens of billions of dollars in volume traded, making it the most mature algorithmic trading platform available. So in this series, I'm going to do a walkthrough of Quant Connect's functionality and use the Lean algorithmic trading engine to code several strategies, backtest them, and deploy them live. In the first tutorial, we're going to start out by testing a popular S&P 500 trading strategy on the daily time frame, just to get a better understanding of the platform. Later in the series, we're going to dive a bit deeper and learn how to dynamically select from a universe of stocks, add custom data sets, backtest strategies on multiple time frames, and deploy some of these strategies live using interactive brokers. Note, this is not a sponsored video. I have no affiliation with Quant Connect. However, I do have an affiliation with Interactive Brokers. So if you could please like and subscribe and check out Interactive Brokers using the link below, it really helps support the content. So up on my screen here, I have the Quant Connect website. So this is Quant Connect, the platform. So this has pricing as data feeds. It has a whole community. It has an IDE that's living in the browser. There's documentation. And you can see I'm signed in with my user account, part-time Larry, so I can save all my different back tests and strategies and studies all here, right? But what I'm gonna be focusing on in this tutorial is Lean. So Lean is actually the open source uh, trading engine. So like the back end of Quant Connect. So you think of Quant Connect as this front end platform behind it, what's running all these back tests and algorithms is the Lean engine. So Lean, the engine is actually open source, right? You can actually download it and run it locally on your machine. And that's what I'm going to be doing. So we're going to use the Lean CLI so that we can develop our uh, strategy locally and have the option to deploy it to the cloud. So up on my screen now, you can see I have the Quant Connect Lean project open on GitHub. So you can see all of the source code for this Lean engine is open source. And you can see it's very actively maintained. So you can see commits are coming in as of six hours ago. So this is very up to date. There are people always working on this and it has a very large community. Now, why would they make it open source? Isn't Quant Connect a business? Well, the nice thing about an open source project like this is that uh, people from the community can find issues, they can contribute back to the engine and make the overall product better. And Quant Connect as a business can still thrive because they sell other services. So they have these back testing nodes, they have uh, access to all these different data sets that you can purchase and they provide a lot of value value add on top if you actually subscribe to the platform. So it actually runs as a software as a service. You can pay a small amount of money and rather than worry about all the infrastructure and how to deploy live trading, you can just pay for Quant Connect and not worry about that stuff. So it's kind of a win-win for both sides. All right, that's great. So how do we get started with this thing? I have all the instructions written here on hackingthemarkets.com. If you wanna follow along or you can just watch me do it right here. And so we just need to go to a terminal first of all, I'm gonna create a new directory for my project. And so I'm gonna make a directory called uh, Quant Connect connect a lean tutorial, right? And so that I'll do that. And then I will CD into that. And you can see I have an empty directory right here, right? Now that we have our directory, we need to install lean. So I'm going to do pip install lean. And if you've been following this channel, you should already know how to install a Python package using pip. So pip install lean and it will install it and all of the dependencies and we don't have to worry about that. The other thing you're going to need is Docker. I have a link to it here, Docker desktop. And you can just go to uh, docker.com, click get started and download load Docker desktop for whatever chip you're running. The nice thing about using Docker is that Lean can run on any operating system. And so I can use Lean on my Mac. You might be using Windows and we might be deploying to a Linux machine and all those can use the Lean Docker image and all those dependencies are managed nicely and we don't need to worry about installing all this low level stuff. It's all packaged up for us. So once you've downloaded Docker, installed it and run it, you should have this nice little whale up here that says Docker desktop is running. So when you click it, should say Docker's running and you should be good to go. All right, I have a new directory. I have lean installed with pip and I have Docker. Now I should be able to run the lean init command. So I'm gonna clear this out. I'm gonna type lean init to initialize a new project. So when I run lean init, it shows me some announcements and then it says downloading latest sample data from the lean repository. So note, it's not downloading like all the asset data and history. It's not downloading complete data sets. It's downloading just a sample. The first taste is always free, right? And so we'll have a little bit of data for us to test out 
and get started with, and then we'll add more data and run some back tests in the cloud to use the full data set. So now it's asking me a question. It says, what should the default language for new projects be? And I'm gonna say Python, cause that's what I use on this channel, but you can also write your strategies in C sharp. Now look at this, here are some commands to get you going. You can do lean create project, lean cloud pull, and lean back test my project. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a new project. So I'm gonna create a new project and I'm just gonna call it a uh, trade spy, right? So, cause we're gonna start out with just testing some uh, S&P 500 trading strategies and SPY is the ETF that tracks the S&P 500. So it created a project called Trade Spy right there. I'm gonna clear this and let's take a look at what's in the box. So if I open my Quant Connect Lean tutorial directory in Visual Studio Code, you'll see I have a data directory. And so it downloaded a variety of different data sets. You see that's alternative data, uh, CFD, crypto, equity, Forex, future, future options, index, index options, market hour options, and simple properties. And so one nice thing is that Quant Connect supports many different asset types, not just stocks, not just crypto. You can trade all kinds of stuff and there's data sets for all these things. So this downloaded a sample data set for all of these and those are stored inside of the lean format. So if I open the equity directory here, you can see we have uh, India and we have the USA. Uh, I'm more familiar with the USA, but a lot of folks out there have been asking me about uh, India stocks. I just don't know as much about that. When I look inside the USA, directory inside of equities, you can see uh, Quant Connect supports data on many different timeframes. So you can look at data on the uh, daily timeframe. You can look at fundamental data. You can look at hourly data. You can look at minute data. You can look at second data and you have tick data, right? And if I open up this hourly data here, you can see this data is stored in this lean format and it's actually compressed as a zip file. And I'm not gonna talk about the lean format quite yet. We're just gonna use the Quant Connect data as is, but later we'll talk about how maybe you could take your own custom data set and convert it to a format that you can use with the lean CLI. Now, what else do we have in here? If I collapse the data directory, you see my strategy directory or my project directory right here. And then you see there's a sample uh, strategy in here. So main.py. Very bare bones strategy. You see it extends the QC algorithm class. There's an initialize function and an on data function. And I'll talk about that more in a bit. You also see that it creates a, a Jupyter notebook research file right here if you want to do some work inside of a Jupyter notebook. And then finally, we have the lean JSON file here, which has tons of configuration information in here. So you can configure whether you're in live mode or paper trading mode or and configure your uh, your exchange or your brokerage. So maybe you're using a trader, you're using interactive brokers, you're using Binance to trade crypto, Awanda to trade Forex and so forth. It supports a variety of exchanges and brokerages and you can enter in your API keys and have it live trade your account. But the first thing I want to discuss is the sample strategy and the QC algorithm class because we're going to be extending this all the time when we're writing Quant Connect strategies. And so the first strategy I want to discuss is a simple one. I don't want to make it too complicated, but we want to understand the platform first. And so we're going to implement this buy the close, sell the open strategy. And this is something I've been hearing about recently the past few months. I've seen some tweets about it and articles about it. And the gist of it is that holding SPY strictly overnight yields a 4% higher Cager and experiences 44% less volatility. Participating in equity markets strictly intraday would have cost you over two times your starting capital and would leave you underwater even after 27 years of compounding. And so I've linked that article here. And this article is called Making Money in Your Sleep, A Look at Overnight Returns. And in this article, you can see they've compared the results of holding overnight. So buying the close and then just selling right when the market opens versus intraday. So buying the open and then selling the close versus just buying and holding and making no trades at all. And you can see in blue, here is the overnight, the red is an intraday, and the yellow is buy and hold. So you can see the holding overnight is actually outperforming a uh, buy and hold according to this. And the intraday here is actually down even after 27 years. So this is back tested from 1993 through 2020. And you can see overnight, it's showing a total profit and loss of 610%. Buy and hold is only 560% and intraday is minus 47%. And so, yeah, if you're trying to just do day trading, you're really fighting a tough battle here if the market typically ends lower than where it opened. Furthermore, the max drawdown of holding overnight was minus 20%, where 
as the drawdown from buy and hold was minus 50%. And so this buy and hold had to live through the dot-com crash and the great financial crisis in 2008. And so you had these huge drawdowns of SPY. Whereas if you bought at the close and sold immediately at the open, you're not holding through the day. So you never uh, witnessed that entire decline that happened during any one of those periods. I've also seen a similar study reiterated by this Steve Burns here, who also uh, we discussed one of his uh, SPY strategies as well. And I've also seen there's even an ETF now that's trying to exploit this phenomenon that uh, stocks go up overnight, right? And so this part, this uh, group, Nightshares, uh, created these ETFs that take advantage of this night effect. So there's now an ETF that's actually trading called Nightshares SP, uh, S&P 500, so NSPY. And there's even a Nightshares Russell 2000, so NIWM here. So you can actually buy an ETF that packages up this strategy. Or, you know, if you can code this strategy, maybe you can invent your own ETF and charge people fees and make money that way, right? And so that's what some of these uh, companies do. So if this strategy outperforms buying and holding the S&P 500 and this ETF implements that strategy, shouldn't I just clear out my retirement account and go all in on night shares S&P 500? Well, maybe, maybe not. Let's test that out. I wanted to know, is this article true? Is this valid? Are there any assumptions being made here that are incorrect? And we can do this by implementing this strategy in Quant Connect, and we'll also learn the Quant Connect platform in the process and figure out whether this is a good idea. So let's go ahead and do that. So to get started, let's look at the built-in example. So when you create a new project in Quant Connect, it creates uh, this class right here that extends QC algorithm. And if you look Look up QC algorithm documentation. Uh, you can find this documentation here, the class reference, and it has many, many, many different functions and attributes here that you can look at. You can see add data, you can see debug, debugging, you can see indicators, warmups, all kinds of different functions here. But the first couple of functions we need to be familiar with are just these two because you can implement a very basic strategy using them. So the first thing you need to do is extend the QC algorithm class when you start. And there are a couple of methods that you can override. These functions are called initialize and on data. Initialize is just uh, initialize in the class, right? And so similar to how we used Backtrader, if you watch any of my Backtrader tutorials, we extended a BT strategy or in Frectrade, we extended a strategy class. In uh, Quant Connect, you extend the QC algorithm class, right? And in your initialization function, you set a start date for your back test, you set an end date for your back test, you initialize with a cash balance. So uh, this is starting from October 7th, 2013, and it's ending October 11th, 2013. And we're starting with a cash balance of $100,000. And we're adding an equity. And so when you add an equity, you need to give it a symbol, and you need to give it a resolution. And so what we're saying here is we want minute data for SPY, the S&P 500 ETF. And the resolution here is the minute time frame. we could have added the second time frame, the daily, the hourly, and so forth, right? And what this means is that this on data function is going to get called at the close of each minute. If I were to add the daily here, so resolution.daily, then on data would be called at the end of every day. And so I'm going to make a couple changes here. I'm going to initialize with a million dollars because $100,000 is chump change. And then I'm going to use the daily time frame. And what I want to do is just test buying and holding the S&P 500. And so what this is going to do is each time there is a daily close, this on data function is going to get called. And then we're going to check if the portfolio is invested or not. And if we're not invested, we're going to set our holdings to SPY and buy and go all in on SPY. So this is a percentage here. And so if I wanted to buy 50% of my holdings, if I wanted 50% of my holdings to be SPY, then I put 0.5. But this is saying I want 100% of my portfolio in the S&P 500 after the first bar. So the first day closes, I buy, and then I never sell, right? And so the built-in strategy is buy and hold, and so we can run this strategy. And how do we run this strategy using lean? So let me type the lean command here, and you can see there's a whole variety of different commands, and we're only going to use a few of them. One of the commands is backtest. We're gonna do that in a second. There's build, there's cloud, config. We used to create project already. There's data, so we can download or generate data. There's libraries, so if we wanna add like a custom machine learning library. There's live, so if we want to do lean live, we can do a live trading project. We have lean login and log out when we connect it to our Quant Connect account. And there's lean a report and research, all right? And so the first thing we're gonna do is run lean backtest. So I'm gonna clear my screen, get it to the top. I'm gonna to type lean backtest, 
and let's see what happens. It says lean back test and you need to type the name of the project and this is called trade spy. So I'm gonna run lean uh, back test trade spy to back test this algorithm. Okay, and the first thing you're gonna notice is that it starts pulling a Docker image. So we downloaded Docker, but I started fresh for this tutorial just to show you all of the steps. And so what this is doing is downloading the Docker image for Quant Connect Lean. And so it's pulling that down. And then after this is done once, every back test we run from there, it's just gonna use the image. It's all gonna be cached locally on a machine and we won't have to do this again. So this is about four gigabytes in size. So depending on your internet connection, this will take a while. My internet's pretty fast, so this should be done fairly shortly. All right, once it's downloaded that image, you'll see it'll say downloaded newer image for Quant Connect Lean, and it'll actually run that back test, right? And so you see there's a bunch of different log messages on my screen, and eventually you'll see, uh, so you see my portfolio value there of a million dollars, and then you can see the results of my trading strategy, so you can see some statistics there, and you can also see, yeah, more log messages. And now what I'm gonna do is open up uh, this directory here, so you see my project directory. After I run a back test, you see it creates this back test folder, which is kind of neat. And what I like about this is in for each back test, it creates a folder that's uh, that's timestamped. So you can see I ran this on August 10th at 10:34 p.m. right here. Uh, for each back test, we'd have a different timestamp, so we'd have a different folder. We have a record of what code produced that back test, right? We also have a log file for that back test. We have the order of events logged, and we have uh, this statistics file as JSON here. So if we wanted to load this in and create our fr own front end for it, we could do that. And and yeah, you can see the full detailed log right here. And so in this log right here, you see my debug message. So it says purchase stock. And so you can see since I wrote uh, self.debug in the strategy, right? It has self.debug purchase stock. That message will appear in here. So if I check the performance of this buy and hold, you can see it's just a very small a net profit right here. And why is that? It's because of this start date and end date are this is just one week so October 7th through October 11th in 2013 so we don't really know the full results of buying and holding here and so what I want to do now is change the start and end date so we want to get a better of idea of what the performance is like when you buy and hold for a long period so I'm going to make this a 20 year period so I'm going to do uh, 2002 through 2022 and then I'll do uh, August what was the end of last week August 5th uh, 2002 to August 5th, 2022. So let's try to get a 20 years of performance here, right? And so I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna run this back test again for that period, trade spy. And you're gonna see a problem here. So I did that on purpose. And so I'm gonna run this for the 20 year period on my local machine. And if you look here, you can see the performance was uh, very low. And why is that, right? If I held the S&P 500 for 20 years, we should see hundreds of percent in here. So the problem here is that we don't get a snapshot of all of the equity data locally here. I mentioned there's tick data, second data, minute data, and so forth. But whenever we downloaded data, when we initialize this project, it just downloaded a sample of data, right? We don't have 20 years of data here. And so the key to this is we need to back test this in the cloud. So if I go to Quant Connect, com slash datasets, you see there's this US security master here. So it has data for 27,500 equities from January 1998 through today, but it says free in cloud, right? So this is not free locally. And I mentioned Quant Connect makes money in a variety of ways. One of them is that uh, you either need to use the platform in the cloud to use this data for free, or you need to pay a fee to download this data if you want to download it locally. And so there's licenses on all of these, this data if you look uh, at the pricing, right? And so so there's cloud access that's free. You can download on premise. So if you're like a hedge fund that wants to test on your local machine, or if you're just an individual willing to spend $600 a year, you can get this download on premise license. And I know people that watch YouTube videos want every single thing to be free, but the reality of this is that maintaining these equity data sets and, and accounting for splits, dividends, mergers, acquisitions, IPOs, delistings, all this stuff, uh, these news feeds, all these different uh, sources of alternative data, uh, these things have entire teams behind them, Quant Connect has a small team paying engineers and doing all this work costs some money. So using all this data locally is not free. But what we can do, however, is run the lean cloud backtest command that will backtest this in the cloud and use this entire data set for free. So let's go ahead and do that. We're still not going to use the Quant Connect ID in the browser just yet. I want to do as much as possible uh, from the command line. So I'm going to clear and I'm going to do lean cloud backtest. Uh, trade spy. So I'm going to type it just like that. 
and it says user ID not valid. And that's because my local CLI here, my command line is not connected to my Quant Connect account. So what I need to do is type lean login and it's gonna ask me for a user ID and an API key. And so the way you get that, you need to go to your account and if you scroll down, you see it says security, it says a request email with token and your user ID for API request. And so I'm gonna do that. I click that, it says email sent successfully, check your email and I'll get an email with a user ID and API key and I'm gonna enter those in now. All right, so right here you can see I've already entered in my user ID and my API token and when I hit enter, it said successfully logged in. So I should be connected now. And so I'm gonna clear this out once again and I'm gonna type a uh, lean cloud backtest trade spy, and this should get me a cloud backtest. And no, it doesn't yet. We got one more thing we need to do. It says no project with a given name or ID could be found. So my project here that I've created called a trade spy does not exist in my Quant Connect account. So my Quant Connect account has a bunch of code running, but locally I have this code running. Quant Connect doesn't know about this. So I need to use the push command. So I'm gonna do a lean cloud uh, push and that'll push my project to Quant Connect, right? So it knows my credentials and I can push that up. So it created my cloud project like that and now it's on Quant Connect, right? And so now that it's there, I can backtest it in the cloud. So I'm gonna do lean cloud backtest trade spy just like that, build request successful and it's starting a backtest named virtual red orange armadillo. And so it gives these nice little cute random names to you. And then there you go, my back test came back to my local machine now, and it shows me the results. So you can see I started with my uh, million dollars and you see my net profit of 622%, and I now have $7 million uh, 20 years later. And so that's great. Look at that compounding annual return of 10.38%. What a great strategy buy and hold is. Now, if you wanna see a graphical representation of this, what you can do is do a Lean Cloud Backtest Trade Spy dash dash open, and this will open the backtest on Quant Connect, and you'll see a visualization and charts of your backtest right there on the Quant Connect website. So let me let this run one more time. Dancing Brown Wolf. And you can see it requested a coding environment and it fired up my algorithm inside of Quant Connect. And I can see the results of my backtest. So you can see Trade Spy has been pushed to the cloud. So you can think of it like Git, you know, Git, you can do pull and push. So you can pull down a project from GitHub or you can push a new code to GitHub, right? And so I've pushed this to the cloud so it exists there. So check this out. We have a graphical representation of our strategy returns. You see strategy equity. You can see it going up and to the right over time. Started with a million, ended with 7.2 million, 622% returns. We've only paid $87 in fees. We can go to the orders tab, see our initial order in 2002 on August 6th. So after the first bar, after the first day, it bought on the market open at $58 per share of SPY. 17,500 shares of SPY were uh, sitting pretty and we can even download our orders as a CSV file. So. Very nice functionality Quant Connect uh, provides. And we already have a great strategy of doing nothing. We can just go hang out with our friends and family now, right? No, we're not gonna do that. We're going to spend lots of time trying to figure out how to beat the market and how to come up with a scheme to trade and do better than this. And so let's try to do that now with our making money in your sleep strategy. All right, so let's adjust our buy and hold strategy to make it look more like the one that's described in the article. And so I'm gonna change my class name to uh, buy the close and sell the open. So I'm gonna go to my code here and I'm gonna rename this to uh, buy close sell open, right? So let's do that. And then I have the strategy written on the website here. And so you can see the first thing I do is for the start and end date, I set those to 2022. So I'm just gonna do last week's data. So August 1st of 2022 through uh, August 5th of 2022. Why am I doing that? Well, if I'm running a back test over a 20 year period that makes orders every single day, the back test will take a while to run, right? And so I wanna make this back test kind of quick, verify my logic first so I can easily look through five days of trades, verify my algorithm is working and the logic is correct and verify that the orders are opening and closing at the appropriate time. And once that's correct, I'll extend it to the full 20 year period. So I wanna log this out and show it for just five day period, make sure that works first, right? I'm gonna leave my cash at a million dollars and I'll make sure my resolution is minute data, okay? 
The next thing I did here is I set an interactive brokers model. So you see I have this set brokerage model here that I'm putting in place. And so I'm gonna put that right here. So a set brokerage model, right? And so I'm gonna use the brokerage interactive brokers and I'm gonna use an account type of margin because that's gonna match what I'm going to be doing in live trading. I'm gonna be using interactive brokers to live trade this and I wanna make sure I take into account fees. And so uh, Quant Connect has reality modeling. And so if I look that up, you'll see some details about the reality modeling here. And this will model the behavior of your brokerage account. And so one thing a lot of back tests out there don't take into account is your fill price and your fees. So especially uh, fees here, if you look here, you can use a commission free model, but you can also use something like the interactive brokers fee model, right? And this will make it behave more like interactive brokers, which I believe is just uh, 0.005 cents, so like half a cent per share. And so if, if I'm ordering a thousand shares of SPY, that is not free, right? It's gonna be like $5. So if I click here for the fees of interactive brokers, you can see how it models this, 0.005 cents a share with a $1 minimum fee. You can see the futures fees here and the various volumes of contracts and how much those would cost, right? The next bit of functionality I'm gonna use is the market on close order functionality. So you can do market orders, limit orders, or you can do market on close orders and market on open orders. And since we're trading the close and the open, I'm gonna use market on close order just like that. And so I'm gonna do a self, right? Self dot market on close order, right? and it's gonna be the symbol, it's gonna be SPY, and I'm just gonna do a fixed amount right now, just a thousand shares, right? So I'm gonna get rid of that set holdings, and I'm gonna buy a thousand shares of SPY on the close. I'm also going to use this function on order event here, right? And so I'm gonna write on order event, and I'm gonna do self and order event. Okay, and so this method is fired whenever there's an order event. So since I set this market on close order, that doesn't necessarily mean that order filled that instant, right? And what I wanna do is catch when that order event happens and check that the order was filled. And only after the on close order is filled am I going to send this order to sell on the open. So what I'm gonna do is check on the order event for this order, and so I'm gonna check if the order event dot status, dot status, and I forget sometimes they use these capital letters here, which is a little bit different than what I do. Uh, so I always have to check whether it's capital or lowercase. So order status dot filled. So I'm checking whether the order status is filled and I'm gonna check whether it filled a quantity greater than zero. So whether it's a buy order or a sell order. Notice whenever I'm doing a sell order, I use a negative value. So on a buy order, I buy 1,000 shares. On a sell order, I put negative 1,000 to sell 1,000 shares, right? So I'm gonna check if the order events uh, fill quantity is greater than zero. Then I'm gonna send my on open order. So I'm gonna do market on open order, also for spy, and then I'm gonna set negative 1,000. I'm gonna change this hard-coded symbol and share count uh, in the next implementation of this strategy. The other thing you'll notice I'm doing here is I'm keeping track of whether I've sent the closing order yet or not. So in my initialization function, I'm just creating a variable, so uh, closing order sent. So I'm gonna do closing order sent. You can name that whatever you want. I'm gonna say false, because at the very beginning, I haven't sent a closing order yet. And so on the first, after the first bar, so this is the first minute bar, I'm gonna check, am I invested? No, I'm not. So I'm going to send a market on close order, right, for a thousand shares. And after that, I'm gonna say self dot closing order sent equals true, right? And I also wanna make sure I don't send a market on close order multiple times, right? And so if you think about it, minute by minute, right, the first minute pass, have, am I invested yet? No, I'm gonna send a market on close order, but that order hasn't filled yet, right? At 9.30, 9.31, 9.32, that doesn't fill until the end of the day. And so I'm not gonna be invested. So it would send this market on close order over and over again, and I don't want that. So I wanna say, if not self.portfolio.invested and not self.closing order sent, then uh, send the market on close order. And that's why I'm keeping track of this true false value, right? And in the on order event, what I'm gonna do is check this uh, order status and check if it's filled. If I've bought a positive number of shares, then I can go ahead and turn around and send my market on open order at the open, right? So I'm gonna sell. And then I can also set, set self.closing order sent equal to a uh, false. And then next time around for the next day, it knows that it needs to go ahead and send that market on close order again. And so how do I know all these keywords like order status dot filled, order event dot fill quantity status and all that? Reading lots and lots of documentation. So you need to get familiar with, you know, order event and quant connect, right? 
right? And so they have a really good a set of API documentation here and tons of documentation on how orders work. And you can even study it at a low level here to see all these attributes like status and order fee. And you can even hook this up to your Visual Studio Code and see the function signatures as well. And I really need to do a Visual Studio Code setup on this so you can get all the tab completion and inline documentation here and show you how to do that. But for now, let's go ahead and do a back test here of this trade spy strategy. So I'm going to do a lean cloud back test trade spy once again, and let this run in the cloud and check that our orders are functioning properly. Now, when I run that, you still see my return is 622%. That sounds a lot like the last one, right? And the issue here is that I haven't pushed my project to the cloud. So I need to do lean cloud push again, and then I can back test in the cloud to get my updated code. So I'm going to run this again, then we'll run lean cloud back test trade spy and have it run. All right, and you can see my return wasn't very good since last week was a negative week. We had a slight negative return. And let's go ahead and check out our orders. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and run the cloud back test again. I'm gonna do the dash dash open uh, parameter here to go ahead and open this in the cloud because ultimately I do like the visualization that it provides you when you're running one of these back tests. All right, I think I saw a quirk since I renamed the class. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the uh, play button here. It didn't launch that back test by default. And this is gonna give me a chance to talk about how uh, there's actually a pricing model for Quant Connect. So notice when I run this back test, there's actually a free tier delay, right? So it's waiting like 20 seconds before it even submits my back test, right? Because it's actually using uh, some, some back test nodes here. And so the free plan has a 20 second delay and the node is a bit slower. So it takes a while to run these back tests um, on Quant Connect if you're on a free plan. So I went ahead and ran this and you can see my strategy results. And so we only ran it for those few days, but what I wanna do here is make sure our orders are functioning properly. And so you can see on August 1st here, the first order we submitted was buy on market close. And so let's go ahead and trace through this. So you see in our uh, buy, close, sell, open, initialize, then on data. So we're on the minute time frame. So after the first minute, so uh, Quant Connect uses New York time. So the market opens at 9.30. And then after the first bar, so 9.30 to 9.31, at 9.31, it actually submits that buy on market close, right? And so um, on data, this runs up to the first, first bar, it checks, are we invested? No. Has the closing order been sent? No, because closing order sent is false. So it's gonna send that market on close order and it happens at 9.31, right? Now, when does that fill? Not at 9.31, it's not a market order, it's a market on close order. And so the market closes at 4 p.m. or 1600 right here, 1600 hours. And you see this filled on the close, right? So we bought a thousand shares at the close at 1600 and that order filled, which is great. And then immediately after that, right, you can see our on order event is checking for order events and it detects that an order has been filled of greater than zero. And so we set a market on open order of negative 1000. So that's a sell at the open. And so you can see here at 1600, we executed a sell market on open right here, minus 1000. And you can see when did it fill? The next morning at 9.31, it filled, right? And there's the fill price, right? And you can see right after that, 9.31, bar closes, buy on market close, fills at four o'clock and so on and so forth. Until August the 5th, it says sell on market open and we're still holding it because our back test ends at August 5th. So the next market open wouldn't be till August the 8th. And so this logic seems to be correct and so is functioning properly. So now all we need to do to fix this up, we can change the backtest range. You can either do that locally or you can start using the Quant Connect IDE right here if you wanna use it in the browser. And so what I'm gonna do now is test this from 2002 uh, through uh, 2022. So I'm gonna do exactly 20 years uh, with $1 million and just have this run uh, over and over again. And so this is gonna take a little bit longer to backtest and while we're doing that, let's go ahead and look at the pricing here. And yeah, you need to decide whether Quant Connect is worth it for you. I'm doing an evaluation of it right now. I think I'll probably end up buying it, but I still haven't yet. So I'm trying it out. There's Quant Researcher at $10 a user a month. That gets you a live trading add-on, single member organization, lean CLI, local coding, two compute nodes. There's a team plan, trading firm, and institutional plans. And if you choose this, it actually adds a bunch of stuff. So it says $60 a month, and you get these backtesting nodes, research node, live node, and so forth. And yeah, you gotta decide how much to spend on this stuff, or you can set up these things yourself and do it all for free, but the cost is your time. And my time is personally pretty valuable, even though I give a lot of it away for free. 
So check this out. We can watch our strategy get plotted here. So you can see it's up till the year 2007 or so. So everything's looking pretty good, but then we're gonna hit the financial crisis here in 2008 pretty soon. So we should turn down, but you can see it started out pretty good. Uh, moving back down now, and I'm just gonna let this finish. All right, that's done running. You can see I eventually hit the maximum number of orders at 10,000, and that occurred during the year 2022. So we pretty much got 20 years of data in. That's another limitation of the free plan. If you make 10,000 orders, it's gonna stop right there. But you can see right here, this gives us a pretty good idea, and it shows my return was only 22%, which is actually very uh, surprising, right? And it says the fees are $50,000. Does that make sense? That seems... Uh, really high. So let's figure out how they calculated the fees. So we mentioned that uh, interactive brokers cost a 0 0.005, right? So a 0 0.005 uh, cents per share and we're ordering a thousand shares of SPY. So it actually costs five dollars for each one of these trades, right? And for each day we're doing an on open order and an on close. So it actually costs ten dollars a day to make these trades. There's about 250 uh, trading days in the year. So we multiply times 250, right? That's $2,500 a year. And then we multiply times 20 years. Believe it or not, it actually costs $50,000 for us to make these trades using interactive brokers of buying and selling SPY over and over again every single day. And so you can see fees here made a big impact on our returns. And we didn't really get that great of returns, even though it was positive. So uh, one great thing about Quant Connect is it takes into account the interactive brokers uh, fee model and models this all out for us. And so we don't get these exaggerated returns, right? So what I want to do now is write another version of the strategy that uses a couple additional features of Quant Connect just to see it from a different angle and use some more functionality and learn the platform a little bit better. The first thing I'm going to do is use scheduling. So we're going to schedule an order using self.schedule here. And I'm also going to use this calculate order quantity. So rather than doing a fixed order quantity of a thousand, I want to use the entire uh, cash balance that we have, all right? And so on the website, I have this updated version. So set start date, send end date. So I'm using the same start and end date, the same cash of a million dollars. But notice when I add equity, I'm doing self.security. So I'm making some slight improvements here. So when I call self.add equity, this actually returns an object. So I'm going to store that in self.security and I'm going to use the symbol in this security object right here. And the reason for that is so that I don't have to write the string spy over and over again. So instead of writing spy again down here, right, I can just type self.security.symbol and I can change the symbol in one place. And note, I should use self.security.symbol right here as well. So if I had a stock symbol that changed for whatever reason, that would be stored here and I can just reference it as self.security.symbol. Or if I wanna try this strategy with a different symbol, I wanna change it and try it with the Qs or IWM, right? QQQ or IWM, I don't have to replace that. That string in three places. I just add it here and then I do self.security.symbol. I just change it in one place. So I'm going to go back here and modify this now. So I'm going to do self.security equals self.add equity just like that. And then here I can do a self.security.symbol and reference it like that. And then self.security.symbol right here. Right? And then if I want to try this with QQQ, right, or SSO or any other symbol, I could just change it right there. And then I don't have to update anything down here. The next bit of functionality I'm going to use is the scheduling functionality. And this allows me to set all different types of rules to schedule a function to run, right? And so I'm going to take this and I'm going to put this in here in the initialize function. And what this says is every single day, right, after the market opens, I'm going to run a particular function. And that function is called sell open, right? So this is saying after the market opens, and this is one minute after the market opens. I could say 10 minutes after the market opens or 15 minutes after the market opens. Pretend I'm doing like the opening range breakout we discussed. Maybe I want to run something after 15 minutes or 30 minutes. I could do that. I'm saying run self.open. And so what I need here now is the code to actually run. So I'm going to code this sell open here, sell open here just like that. And inside of this function, I'm going to put my logic that I want to run every day after the market opens. So here in the sell open function, I have if self portfolio invested. So if I'm invested at the open, I'm going to run the liquidate function and then set closing order sent to false. And so I'm going to take the part where I do this uh, market on open order, right? Right. I don't need this anymore. I'm going to just do sell the open. I'm going to say if 
self.portfolio.invested. Too much autocomplete there. Uh, if self portfolio invested, I'm going to do self dot liquidate. Okay. And if you use the Quant Connect IDE or have VS Code set up properly, you notice you get that nice uh, auto completion, which is very helpful. And I'm going to say uh, self dot closing order sent is false. So this isn't selling a thousand shares anymore. It's just liquidating all the shares I have. And so the final thing I need to do is change this from a hard coded 1000 to calculating an order quantity. And that's what I've done here. So what I'm doing is doing quantity equals calculate order quantity. And so I'm going to put this here. So I'm going to do a quantity equals self dot calculate order quantity. And you just need to give it a symbol. So we're trading SPY, so self.security.symbol, and I'm gonna calculate from 100% of the portfolio. So if I look at this function, you see the target amount we want. So target percentage holdings, I want 100% of my holdings to be SPY, and so that'll calculate the quantity to make up 100% of my portfolio. And then instead of a thousand, I can just do a quantity there just like that. And now the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure this on close order isn't sent until closer to the close, right? This is a market on close order. And remember, I'm sending it at 9.31 a.m. So just a minute after the market opens, I'm sending my on close order. But the price might fluctuate throughout the day for SPY. So I'm going to get a price that's a little bit closer uh, to the close. And so Quant Connect has this self.time here. So I can check the hour of the day, the minute of this bar. And so I'm going to check that it's the last hour. So self.time.hour equal equal 15. Remember, I said it uses New York Times. So I'm gonna check if it's uh, three o'clock, right? And then I'll go ahead and calculate the price then. And that's what I'll use for the calculate order quantity. So I'm gonna check the price closer to the end of the day before I submit this market on close order. So let me go ahead and run this with 100% of my portfolio and see if this works as expected. All right, so that's run. And you can see our returns are indeed better. We nearly uh, doubled our money from a million to two million, but still uh, vastly underperforming buy and hold here. You can see my fees are gigantic here, 450,000. And I think that's because my first orders, you know, are uh, lots of shares. So 17,000 shares times half a cent a share. So we're ordering lots and lots of shares here. We could probably reduce our fees a little bit more than this, I think. I think that's kind of high. There's probably other fee models where our fees would be much less than this that would boost our returns a little bit. So one thing I wanna try is to go ahead and set it to commission free for now. So the article we've been looking at here says trading fees have essentially been eliminated across the board for equity trades. So this doesn't take into account fees at all. And that might be why the performance is so good for the hold overnight strategy. So let's go ahead and change our model here to eliminate the interactive brokerage model and try zero fees. I know that's not what we'd actually do, but I just want to try Try to compare apples to apples here to see if that's why the uh, back test in the article is showing such a high return. So I'm going to do self.security and notice for each security I can set a fee model. So Quant Connect has this constant fee model and I can set a constant fee and I'm just going to set it to zero here to simulate a commission free trading. And I'll run this one more time with zero commissions to see the results. All right, so we've run it again, and you can see now we're running it with zero fees, and a million dollars has jumped to nearly $3 million and nearly a 200% return, which is pretty good, but also not quite as good as the article and not as good as what we had for buy and hold. So what's the deal here? Why is the performance of buying the close and selling the open so much worse when we back test it using Quant Connect versus what this article tells us? Well, uh, first of all, uh, this article essentially waves away uh, fees, right? It treats them like not a big deal, but when we actually run this, it actually does make a pretty big deal when we're making 10,000 trades and buying 17,000 shares of SPY right at the beginning. There is there is some impact on fees there on our returns. Uh, secondly, if you you look at this back test, it seems to rely a lot on this 1993 through 2000 performance. So this blue line, the overnight strategy gets way ahead here when going from 99 through 2000. And so in Quant Connect, I'm testing from 2002 through 2022. And in Quant Connect, you get data from 1998. So I could have started at 1998. But I feel like during a 20 year period, if this uh, strategy was that much better than the 20 year period, I should have shown it, I shouldn't rely on the dot com 
bubble to get ahead here, right? This relies on a very specific window of time. The third thing to consider is that Quant Connect automatically accounts for dividend reinvestment. And so that really magnified our returns to 10 point something percent. And I don't think the buy and hold in this particular article took into account dividend reinvestment from buying and holding throughout that entire period. Now, this article does give a few more things you could do to try to boost your returns. It mentions you could use leverage, right? So it mentions taxes will hold you back, but you can use a tax sheltered account. So you could actually try this in your IRA if you really wanted to. And you could also try these leveraged instruments like SSO and UPRO, which are two times the SPY and three times the SPY. And, and so if we wanted to, we could go in here and actually run this with SSO. And I'll go ahead and let that run real quick just to see what a leveraged instrument like this would accomplish. And look at that, when we run this, it actually performed worse than just running the strategy on SPY. You can see here, whenever there is the COVID crash and you're holding SSO, your downside happens pretty quickly. So you went from like 2 million to being back underwater right there. And so when you're reading an article like this, make sure you test it out for yourself. Cause if you scroll down, you'll see uh, if the strategy was deployed using UPRO, in theory, the results would be the same, just three times, correct? And this person says, correct. And we just tested it and that is not true. So one thing that is very clear from this is that you should take articles like this and advice you get from people and actually test it yourself. Don't trust anyone. Try things yourself and see if it actually works. And a tool like Quant Connect actually makes this uh, pretty simple. And also it's much better to code an automated trading strategy like this because think about it. If this is your strategy and you had to do this every day for 20 years, that would be a pain in the ass. You would miss out and you wouldn't execute your strategy correctly all the time. Whereas if you have a test platform like this that's just running with a few lines of code like we just wrote it's just handled automatically for you right you save tons of time by learning how to code and backtest these strategies so that about wraps it up for part one of this series i hope this exercise of testing out this strategy and this article made sense and gave you a good overview of the platform and how to write strategies using quant connect in the follow-up videos i'll dive a little bit deeper and do a variety of strategies and eventually live trade them with my interactive brokers account. So thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned for the next video. Thanks.